रजीम बिस्मिल्लाम असलम जी आया नू पखेर निहाओ चुन शुमे वश फले ओहाय गुजाइमस गुटे बोगन ओला बोजोर प्रीवियत कई फहाल हर शुम चतोरे आहलन बसाल मरहबा बूना मूचो ग्रासिया स्वाबी अब भली करे आया होश गाल दिन नायो सायो हो या मोरा ची बतो ची हाल योद काली मेरा एंड वाई वो वेलकम टू एवरीबॉडी स्टूडेंट टू पी टी वी वर्ल्ड एंड वाचिंग वर्ल्ड दिस मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर साहब वेरी वेल एंड कुलीग हैव पर सी मिस हाजो सती आई हैव टू बी शहजाद हसन खान एंड इट्स अ हॉट समर मॉर्निंग ओवर इन इस्लामाबाद ऑन अ मंडे आर वी रेडी टू किक स्टार्ट आवर वीक वेल दैट्स अ क्वेश्चन फॉर हाजर फर्स्ट हेलो हाजर अस्सलाम वालेकुम हाउ आर यू फीलिंग टुडे वालेकुम अस्सलाम जजाकल्लाह खैर फॉर इंट्रोड्यूसिंग मी आई आई डोंट थिंक सो वी हैव अ चॉइस इन नॉट किक स्टार्टिंग आवर वीक वी हैव टू बट यस आई थिंक द रेनी सीजन इज द स्पेल इज ओवर फॉर नाउ एंड वी आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग अ वेरी हॉट mornings uh, in in islamabad but having said so shahzad over the weekend i was watching a very nice uh, feel good sort of um, netflix season it's called good witch i don't know if you have seen it or not uh, so so the story is hinge around a small town in which everybody is well connected they are not very uh, capitalist sort of a people there but i mean everyone look out for each other and i think these sorts of themes always resonate with us for people of third world countries because the living is quite similar to ours right so we are also very well connected we have a lot of relationships so our family system is very strong our support system is very strong and not just the family system but also in our neighborhoods you know we the usually mohalla system yes the mohalla yeah. system is very strong and people usually know what is going on in the next door uh, sometimes and people are keen to know yes people yes. are keen to know yes. whether what's happening you know yes. uh, or whatever family drama is going on in the wall right <laughs> next to them as well and they yes. are so willingly yes. uh, you know, will take part yes. in making sure that they kind of even if they cannot yes. help at least they should know what's happening in your life and and if they don't know i mean then there some of the people take this responsibility very religiously yeah. upon themselves to make sure that they know what is going on you know true, in the, that's true. Uh, i mean in the house next door yeah. um, but uh, having said and so in addition to that i'm very okay. sorry i know you that sure, you want sure. to move go on ahead. to the the next part of it as well but very quickly you know so in every mohalla Yes. Uh, you will see a rishte wali aunty. Yes. You know, you so you'll yes. have a private fruit vendor. Yes. You know who'll actually come to your door and be like, "Sir, saath wali baaji ne do darjan ke liye nahi, aap ek darjan le rahe." Yes. You know things like that. Yes. And then there'll be one of those people, you know, who will be the bhai of the entire mohalla. Yes. You know, so everybody will call him. Yar, bajaa zara mehman aaye, kuch leke to aayi bate biscuit baag ke liye. <laughs> so he will, he would only go to go, get those biscuits just because of the fact that he will get another free packet alongside it as well, or yes. will never have to pay back the uh, change money as well. So I think. That 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 happens in every mohalla and that's a good part no and and sometimes if there's not uh, i mean a bhai which is i'm circulating all of the news in that mohalla so there's a particular uh, kaam wali or the helpers that make sure that uh, they drop off every uh, i mean gossips inside the house into mm. the next door and make sure that there's a circulation of that local news within that mohalla uh, but that's a very feel good season and then if you do not have yogurt at your place you can go to the next yes. one you know yes. or probably oh, the next one, or oh, sugar yes. or spices yes. Yes. so it keeps on coming yes. Yes, yes, and in certain areas, I don't know if you have heard about it in communities, particularly because they are so well connected and deeply entrenched within their communities. Uh, I've heard that if there is any um, matam there, right, or, or if any, anyone dies there, so there is a tradition that for three days consecutive, um, the stove of that house is not lit true, true, uh, true. because the people from that community they come to your place and they make sure that they give you the food and entire stuff which is needed to cater to the guests there, right? True. And that's a very wonderful tradition because this is how that uh, economy. Economy circulates, right? Um, and because you are grieving over that particular person who has left this world, um, and you are not forced to do the labor of making sure that the things are getting uh, done, especially with the catering and food and all of this stuff. Because obviously, you're not in that state of mind. Exactly, and, and it's a lot of support. Yes, you know, a lot of people yes. come in, and you know, then obviously that gap, you know, which is left behind, is actually filled yes. with all of those amazing friends you have, yes. or you know, the the mohalle das. But the I think that the whether the worst or the best part actually happened with me and my cousin. Okay. So my cousin is actually seven days younger than me. Okay. Okay. And so I was born on thirtieth of January, and he was born okay. on seventh of February. So my grandfather, my dad, Abu, okay. had a friend. You know, uh, Mozam Saab, may okay, his okay. Uh, soul rest in peace as Ameen, well. Ameen. He was uh, he used to live in the house uh, right next to us. So his sons were elder. Okay. So his eldest son was Asad, and his youngest son was Shahzad. Okay. So my dad <laughs> looked at both of them. 
named me Shahzad and Hema Sad. Wonderful, <laughs> I was like, wonderful. You know, कहीं और से idea नहीं मिला बच्चों का नाम रखने का आपने मॉल में ही देख के रख दिए. That's a wonderful thing, and I think Shahzad is a really nice name, and so it's a, so it's a very wonderful name. Uh, but having said so, that season was very enchanting because uh, the the uh, idea hinges. So it's a good witch. The idea hinges around. There is a strategic ambiguity in that season because uh, the protagonist of that show is Cassie Nightingale, and she has a very strong intuitive power. So she gets to know that what is going to happen next. Uh, Um, so uh, I think our producer very strictly and sternly said that we need to move on to our top story. <laughs> we have a lot of so, stories, right? Yes, she yes. gave us 15 minutes in the beginning, and then she was <laughs> like, "Okay, keep it there." Yes. But ladies and gentlemen, yes. today it happens to be World Environment Day. It's very close yes. to us, and I think that Pakistan, being the most vulnerable, we have seen such climate mm. change problems over yes. here. I think what we really need to kind of talk about is that how, God forbid, just because of plastic pollution. By 2050, yes. there will be more plastic in the oceans yes. and in the seas than the fish. I think that's something which we really need to kind of work on, which we really need to think on. And also, our Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has said that the target of increasing bilateral trade volume between Pakistan and Turkey is uh, raised to be five billion dollars annually over the next three years is very much achievable. On his Twitter handle, Prime Minister referred to his recent visit um, to Turkey, where he attended the inauguration of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who has been re-elected for the third time in the office. He said in his meetings with the head of the leading Turkish business groups uh, and highlighted the need for investment. and trade in the fields of agriculture energy information technology and construction so i think i think that's a very good thing because uh, i see there are a lot of uh, products that have filled into the pakistani market which is which are from the turkey and yes. uh, specifically so i am interested in a lot of tableware so i see a lot of crockery which is coming from the <laughs> turkey especially pasha baje uh, because i went to istanbul and saw their products there Uh, so, uh, so it's a good thing that uh, I think Turkey and Pakistan have this brotherly relation, and they have been going on for quite some time. Inshallah, and, it, and that's uh, exactly how we actually kind of hope for the future as well. But very quickly, yes. since we have mentioned that today happens to be World Environment yes. Day, and obviously those values really need to transcend for what we really need to do, what kind of actions we need to take. We really need to transcend from our premier, and that's yes. exactly what our Prime Minister Mia Mohammad Shahbaz Sharif has said. Saab has said that he has expressed Pakistan's unwavering commitment, uh, Hajar, to combat plastic pollution and embark on a journey of plastics reduction. In his message on the occasion of World Environment Day being observed on Monday, he emphasized the need to combat plastic pollution under the global theme "Beating Plastic Pollution," and that's really important. Yes. And it's because of the fact that imagine that you know that this is something which is never going to go away from this planet. Oh. There's no decomposition. There's no decay to it. Yes. And imagine we are using it as a luxury. Yes. So imagine that okay, we need to go for a treat. Hey, Daddy, can you go and buy some plastic forks and plastic yeah. spoons for us, just yes. because so that we cannot get the uh, steel ones, the dirty ones as well. So imagine the plastic bags that we are using. And even though that you know back in the day, I think two years or three years ago, there was this drive over in Islamabad yes. where they were making Islamabad plastic. Plastic free, right. but eventually it didn't. And really I think happen. we have that road, especially in that Atatürk yeah, area, which was made. Road. Yes, yes, which was made because of the plastic products. But having so, said so, we have an entire ministry dedicated for the climate change, True. which is headed by Minister Sherir Rahman. So Mr. Sherir Rahman has also a uh, very progressively work on uh, to combat this plastic True. pollution, and she's also mentioned about it. And uh, she's done a wonderful job representing Pakistan. And I do remember uh, that when she went to Sharmal Sheikh, she is also very uh, keenly. brought up this issue and she has also tweeted that looking forward to unpacking uh, the 7 hour road map on a journey to plastic free pollution the agenda is to move uh, past the slogan work with manufacturers and the coalitions of the change with the citizen support uh, bends do little we have to find a holistic solution to that and obviously shazad it is very much important that we make sure that our public is included in that because without their support without the support of the society you cannot end this plastic solution and i think we have this um, particular tradition uh, in our country where uh, our mothers are very fond of uh, uh, assembling all of this plastic shoppers and there is a big bag plastic shopper bag in our house where, where, where all the other smaller yes. ones are in it yes. and wherever you going ammi can i get a shopping bag oh yeah yes. why not you know why don't oh, you, you need a permission there? for that i, I can simply go no, and i mean no i don't i don't need a permission <laughs> but i need to know where they are <laughs> 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 so i think it's only my you mom really who actually knows kitchen, it yeah. but ladies and gentlemen it's a shared responsibility yes. as a nation we need to make sure that we cut down on it as well but very quickly you know i think what we need to do is that we need to introduce our guest because we're speaking about world environment day today yes. and uh, i'm very thankful and very glad that you yes. know every time that we've been joined by this gentleman because he's got a lot of grip on the subject you know maybe climate change maybe other than that as well but uh, 
Very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, I think we really need to appreciate first up the Pakistan Cricket Board because they organized this Pakistan uh, uh, Cup for Women where PCB Dynamites clinched Pakistan Cup Women Cricket Tournament after beating PCB Challenges by 132 runs in final in Karachi. Betting first, PCB Dynamite scored 211 runs for the loss of 6 wickets in the lot at 45 overs. Sida Nawaz played a blistering knock. She remained top scorer with unbeaten 103 runs. For challenges, Noreen Yaqub bagged 2, while Saima Malik took 1 wicket. In reply, PCB challenges were bundled out for 79 runs and 28.5 overs. That's, uh, well, embarrassing. In reply, PCB challenges, yes, couldn't do well. Javeria Khan remained top scorer with 28 runs for Dynamites. Nashra Sandhu bagged four, while Ghulam Fatima took three wickets. Siddhana was declared player of the match. And it was a great initiative. It was a great initiative by PCB to see that, you know, that there was a uh, yeah. Pakistan's Women Cup which was taking place and that too just before the emerging Asia yes. Cup matches which will be, inshallah, this month as well. And uh, the teams have been selected. The captain has been announced. And it's wonderful. So it's a 14-member squad which will be going to Hong Kong for the emerging Asia Cup as well for women. Wonderful. So like Shazad alluded to before, so today is 5th of June and it's the uh, World Environment Day. The theme of that day is solution to plastic pollution. And certainly we have talked about how uh, plastic is a menace to our society, True. not just our society, it's a global society. Uh, but we have a, a package made in which we will explain the details as to how damaging the plastics can be, especially on this World Environment Day. So please stay tuned. Good morning. World Environment Day is observed annually on June 5. The theme for this year is Solutions to Plastic Pollution. This theme aims to raise awareness about the impact of plastic pollution on the environment and encourage people to take action to reduce plastic waste. Plastic pollution is a growing problem around the world, with millions of tons of plastic waste being dumped into oceans and landfills each year. This waste harms wildlife, pollutes waterways and contributes to climate change. The 2023 World Environment Day seeks to address this issue by promoting sustainable practices and encouraging people to reduce their plastic consumption. Plastic pollution has become so severe that it is estimated that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. The campaign encourages people to make small changes in their daily lives such as using reusable bags, bottles and containers. The campaign also calls on governments and businesses to take responsibility for reducing plastic waste and implementation of sustainable practices. By working together, we can help to protect the planet and create a more sustainable future for all. And ladies and gentlemen, obviously this happens to be our initiative for creating a more sustainable future for all. And on this occasion, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by an environmentalist himself. He happens to be Dr. Ajaz Ahmed. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you feeling today? Good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, it's, a, it's a good day in a sense to start the weekend that... Uh, we are starting with World Environment Day. But, but certainly so. I think Earth is not feeling well because we are polluting it a lot, and yes. especially in terms of the plastic waste that ends up into the ocean, which is damaging to uh, the coral reefs, right? So, sir, on this World Environment Day, what is the significance of the coral reefs and especially and how is plastic damaging them? Well, uh, corals actually are very productive ecosystem yes. and um, it is considered as one of the most productive ecosystem in a sense that it supports so many uh, um, uh, species of right. fish but other marine life as well. True. Uh, there are many factors which are affecting, affecting the coral reefs, uh, uh, bleaching is going on, mm. um, uh, some of the pollutants that we throw through uh, the water drainage etc. Um, with high temperature with uh, many pollutants in it actually uh, cause damage uh, and like in Pakistan we have some of the uh, very small part of corals uh, near hub so the water coming from uh, one of the power plant is actually deteriorating uh, these uh, corals in Charna, in Charna Island. marine life, yes. Yes, so uh, they, it's quite um, alarming in a sense that uh, the most productive ecosystem is being damaged. So the overall production will definitely reduce. Exactly. And sir, in addition to that, I think for, for better awareness and so that, you know, for all our viewers in 47 different countries would know that, you know, what we are talking about. 
How do you think plastic pollution has an impact on our environment? Let's start from here. Well, I think uh, uh, it is one of the um, biggest menace in a sense that uh, it is uh, creating a problem not only for a short period of time, but uh, um, since it decays and decomposition process is long. Um, you know, like uh, the quickest is like about 100 years. Yeah. And it goes up to 600, 700, even 1,000 years. Uh, to depending on the quality of the plastic. Exactly, depending on the uh, quality. And uh, over a period of time, in last, I mean, like generally polymers and all these uh, plastics started uh, somewhere in 1950, 1960. So within 60 to 70 years, all the previous traditions have been overtaken by this plastic because of the convenience, actually. True. So um, I remember and I'm sure that even when you were a child, you used to uh, have a bu uh, basket or yes. uh, Or our mother would actually sue, sue uh, you know, a bag, you know, which we would take yes. to the uh, Itwar Bazaar exactly. and put all of our exactly. vegetables in it. So the, but then this, the convenience, because if I'm going from office and I, even if I have to take uh, milk, so there is, you don't have to take a pot, uh, so mm. they just actually use the plastic bag. Mm. Yes. And the more damaging is single-use plastic. Okay. Because um, uh, though it has a shorter uh, life, but then it is so convenient, it is so, uh, everywhere, it actually, uh, you know, like not only bad for environment, but generally for um, human life as well. So in, uh, in Lahore and even in Karachi, uh, when there were heavy rains about 10, 15 years ago, uh, the whole city got actually clogged. choked, yes. clogged with the, these plastic bags. And uh, so that is not only deteriorating the, uh, the environment, but also lives uh, are also in danger. So uh, uh, it is one of the, I think, the worst thing that <laughs> but, but uh, science has given to. We, we don't have any alternative solution, or I, mean, I mean, as vibrant as that of uh, to the plastic, plastic bag, yeah. because obviously, number one, they are free. Second, uh, I mean, they, they are very portable because they can carry a lot of weight. Uh, so, for example, one plastic bag can carry five kgs of alu, payas and whatnot, right? Yeah. Uh, so, alternatively, the, yeah. the plastic-free solution which is available, number one, it comes uh, in the rupees. You have to pay extra to get that shopper or yeah. whatever the initiative is. So, I think um, that's not an incentive exactly. That is a disincentive because you have to pay for that but right? then you can you can use that uh, for um, many times you so do. if you if you pay five so rupees don't waste it just keep it safe yes somewhere. it's a cloth and then it remains there for um, at least five six years if you use it properly and uh, also i think uh, the there are alternates in the form of uh, jute bags and right. i have seen like in in uh, in bangladesh hmm. if you go for uh, bread or if you go for medicine, they will actually not give you a plastic bag. They will uh, give you a jute bag, right. uh, which is free of cost. But sir, that's okay. not the main problem. Now, I'm very sorry that I have to bring this in, but imagine that when you go to a shop to buy a bread, yes. you know, imagine that the bread is already wrapped in a plastic exactly. bag. Yes. The yes. medicine is wrapped yes. in a plastic yes. wrapper. Yeah. And uh, you know, yeah. the these days, you know, those egg uh, power <laughs> you know, for milk, yes. even they are coming in plastic yes. bags. Yeah. So imagine the how do you think that we are going to look for an alternate when these products of which course. are being produced and sold in millions, yes. right. you know, they are Some made of plastic. Right. Some of these things, I, you need to uh, use plastic uh, because uh, uh, soluble water solubility uh, in order to keep uh, uh, these medicines. Uh, you know, like uh, moisture free or the contents remain the same. So you have to use uh, some of these uh, things. But then uh, even, you know, like bringing chapati in plastic bag, one time uh, use plastic, as I mentioned earlier, True. is dangerous. But then uh, on the other side, I think it's very important to understand that there are more than 600,000 people who are involved in the business True. now. So if we don't have any sustainable alternate, alternate mm. uh, we are actually, so that is the problem actually. What we did um, previously, uh, we came with the solution that banned plastic bags. Yes. Yeah. But we did not give any alternate. That's true. So there, since there was no alternate, people actually started, uh, um, it worked for, you know, like for a month or maybe a two months time yes. when the enforcement was very strong and, yes. uh, you know, like ministers and the teams were going and checking. But the moment it uh, actually j diluted, yes. they again we see the same, and, uh, you know, like practice Situation. going on. Yes. Uh, since there is no sustainable alternate, True. and alternate has to be actually looked into, it could be, um, you know, like something which is more uh, sustainable, uh, cheaper, 
but a longer uh, that's exactly what i wrote that's exactly what i wrote so now I for cheated. example <laughs> if you are to if you are to yeah. speak about alternates uh, obviously you know because there's yes. multiple occasions where we've spoken about alternates and we got some better alternates than already whatever we were using yeah. so imagine there are only three points to it and number one it needs to be cheap yes. it needs to be durable Right. And it's need, it needs to be long lasting long so that we can right. reuse it, right? Yes. So that's yes. the concept you reuse, recycle. And a lot of companies are recycling under their branch of customer. Uh, I think it's the CSR customer yes. service responsibility. Yes. But while we speak of it, it's, it's just that, that, you know, we are not unable to replace plastic with any better alternative. You know, so even if it's a paper bag, right. you put two water bottles in it, you get back home, you know, there's only yeah. one left in it, you know, because the one dropped somewhere yeah. in between the while you were coming. I think one of the issue is that we don't understand uh, the impact these plastic bags have on human life, life and human health. Now we are, we're talking about, you know, like even if we dispose it off, burning is one of the options that people use because it's convenient, you know, like but the kind of toxics, the, the dioxins, the gases that it releases, they are more uh, actually danger, dangerous than uh, any other, you know, like even carbon or you know, methane, etc. Um, then there, is, uh, there are many research studies which show that uh, these plastics right. uh, in the form of microplastics right. actually become part of the ecosystem. Okay. Part of the ecosystem in a way that uh, if, uh, the most of the bottled water these bottles they have microplastic 70 percent of uh, these uh, these bottle uh, uh, items hmm. are contaminated with microplastics mm -hmm. right. and this microplastic become part of the uh, the body part of the, yes. the, the 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 system yes and it remains there because there is no biodegradation process That's and true. the fish we eat um, majority uh, more than 80 it's percent of the fish is basically plastic right um, in in Thatha, there is a lake called Kinjar, yeah, Kalari yeah. Lake. Yeah, yeah. It's it's Kinjar considered Kinjar. as one of the Big largest fresh water uh, yeah. lake of Pakistan. If you go there, you will see uh, at the start at, at the coast of the lake, uh, you won't see uh, soil. Okay. You will see a layer of plastic, plastic bags yeah. because people oh go God. there for picnic hmm. and they throw their uh, plastic. Yes. So what happens is uh, the the coast is very productive normally you know mm. like it it feeds uh, it provides feed because of the photosynthesis process over there because sunlight penetrates right so uh, the most productive uh, part is under uh, cover of plastic mm. so the productivity of that ecosystem also um, uh, diminishes uh, yeah diminishes. and sir in addition to that obviously we certainly do not have to go this far at kanger jail i think only if we go to clifton and you and you try walking in, you know, the only thing your feet are going to catch is, is a shopping bag. Yes. <laughs> that's it. Yes. Either the only the only difference going to be either it's going to be black or white. I think <laughs> that's it. Nothing and other than that. Probably very rarely a chappal yes. too, which is made of our <laughs> plastic. <laughs> plastic too that too is plastic. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And also to complement what Shahzad and Sir uh, added to is that there was a research which they found that the newborn, the fetuses, they have also the components of microplastic because yes. mother was consuming that yes. and an unborn child also has this, which is a very concerning thing. So the research, so Haja, according to this, you know, the research which I read almost somewhat six or seven okay. months ago said that an average, on average, every single human is okay. actually consuming microplastics yeah. worth uh, or the size of a credit card in one year. So imagine okay. what it's going to do to your health. Yes. And we are unaware of it. And while we're speaking of it, I would want to kind of recommend over here that since it's hot these days, it's summers, yes. if you leave your plastic water bottles in your car and you see that there's a little bit of evaporation on top of it, please make sure that you do not drink it because that plastic somewhere is melting and mixing yeah. in your water and then you're consuming it can cause you a lot of illnesses and diseases. Right. Yes, yeah. and also, uh, so for example, there are a lot of researches which is said, and I think Japan has also banned microwave because they feel that the plastic uh, uh, the container that you are adding into that, it was also yeah. melting and it is also very harmful uh, because that particles are melted into your food yeah. product. Because uh, any company can actually put up a sticker on top of, you know, yes. any utensil yeah. you're using in an oven, uh, you know, uh, whatever, what's written Mi on it. You know, micro, you can use micro it. plastic free. Yeah, <laughs> micro plastic free yeah. or something of that sort, you can use it in your yes. microwave. You yes. know, please do not... Do not yes. buy that because yeah. I've seen a lot of oil companies yes. which write, you know, Padani, I don't know, so many Sigma and what, yes. what oil yes. and what oil. Omega. <laughs> and that's not really, yeah, Omega. And, and that's not really true. Right. You know, so I went to a friend of mine who actually owns, I'm very sorry, I'm not going to name anybody. Right. 
So I was like, yeah, you have 47 brands of oils. Okay. You know, you import oil from one company okay. and then you distribute amongst 47 different oil companies. So <laughs> how does it work? You know, so one company is saying there's Omega, one company is saying there's this fish oil in it yeah. and whatnot. So it's like every oil has got it. It's just the way we market it. So I was like, okay. Yes. You know, so we've been yes. buying yeah. all of those things. Yeah. Yaar, pata nahi, omega khal nahi, to kedi taakat aaj nahi hai. chakar nahi hai. And this brings us to a very important point which Shazad alluded to is that, the, and we need to address the elephant in the room, which is the capitalism or these capitalistic practices, especially because they want to earn the money at True. the back of it, right? Um, and that earning of the money is extremely harmful for our environment, right? right. And we have right. seen that how that plastic ends up in the waters, you know, arteries and it's clogging and especially if you see uh, in the Karachi especially in the rainy season so it's all clogged you can't yeah. uh, have a very smooth tra flow of yeah, the transport yeah. there because obviously um, I mean the sewage system is not working because there's so much plastic in that so how do we regulate it how do we address that room elephant in the room yeah. which is called the capital how do we beat about? plastic pollution yeah I think uh, it has to be um, uh, a long-term thinking um, yes. if we don't do any research at the moment we are going to talk and talk and talk yeah. Uh, about the issue, about the, you know, like uh, what kind of uh, uh, problems uh, we are facing because of it. Uh, there is a need to look for alternative and there is a need to do research on that. Um, and the, some of the developing countries are already working on it. Uh, but I think uh, to start with, uh, we need to look into the uh, uh, banning or maybe, you know, like uh, uh, taking out of market these single use plastics. Okay. At least, you know, like, and then there is another important uh, aspect is open burning. So what happened is that most of the people, you know, like workers, uh, for convenience, they gather all the uh, waste and then uh, burn it over there because this is uh, convenient for them without understanding what kind of toxin uh, um, they are actually releasing uh, in the environment. And these toxins play very, very uh, crucial uh, uh, role in deteriorating anybody's health, especially those who are sitting next to, you know, like where they are burning. So uh, I think one of the uh, aspect is look for uh, alternatives um, yeah, for, uh, for some solution or banning single use plastic and then stop this open burning wherever it is going on in order to reduce the impact, negative impact on environment. Exactly. And thank you, sir, so much for, you know, kind of emphasizing on what yes. really needs to be done on World Environment Day. Thank you so much for thank joining us. So wonderful thank to you. have you and for everybody who's out there. This is where we started yes. from, that it's a shared responsibility. Everybody yes. needs to contribute to the cause, making sure that, you know, that we leave this planet for our future generations in a better condition rather than in a worse condition than we what we got. Yes. So I think everybody needs to work collectively. Number one, single-use plastic, as per Doc Sub, you know, needs yes. to be banned, you know, please make sure that we control plastic burning, make sure that, you know, that it's not hurting or damaging our ecosystem. And very quickly, one solution which I have is that a lot of car components are made of plastic. If the automobile industry takes yes. up this challenge that, okay, we will recycle the plastic and then use it in the products we use in making cars can actually contribute quite a lot because millions of cars are being produced every single day and sold to people out there. So I think that's one yes. alternate which I can give. But what to use other than a plastic bag, ladies and gentlemen, is a cloth bag. Please make sure that you use it. Make sure yes. that you invest in it as well. With that, we're actually heading out towards a short break. But you guys will come back. We'll speak a little about more, you know, climate change and how, you know, World Environment Day needs to be celebrated. But rather, we will focus on exchange programs where students go to yes. other universities to learn. Whether is it good or is it bad? She will be on the good side. I'll be on the bad side. Let's see what, what will be the outcome. Good morning. Okay, welcome back. And before going on to the break, I think Shazad alluded to what are we going to talk about it. But I am also of the opinion that one should always travel uh, abroad because obviously it uh, broadens your horizons and you have to learn a lot from interacting with a different civilization, with a different culture. You get to observe their good habits, yeah. their bad habits, and you get to absorb the good habits of that. Uh, and also, it is also a very good learning curve for you because uh, you are learning a lot when you are interacting with the people. So you are uh, sometimes coming 
in a conflict with a lot of customs and uh, values of the social social norms which are not there in your society but they are present yeah. in other societies and how it is celebrated in that um so for for example i love the way uh, i mean turks have this very hospitality business and they they love to uh, hospitably serve their customers or their guests or and they call them musafir so we also call them musafir right so especially the guests um and i, I think shazad has been also to a lot of different countries around the world that. right and so yeah. that's which was your favorite country so i think my favorite country by far has been uh, germany now Okay. You know, so imagine USA, UK. Any particular or, example? I, I mean, reason yeah, why? Yeah, you know, it's it's because of the fact that you know. So I was on the uh, autobahn, and that's something which yes. I like. So imagine that you know, since I'm a car fanatic myself, yeah, yeah, yeah. so BMW is made over there. Okay. The, the top companies are over there. Yes. So may it be Mercedes, may it be any sports yes. car production, yes. it's there. But that's not it. So imagine that they're making softwares for you know the interface they use yes. within the cars, yes. and that's not it. So yes. imagine even on the autobahn, from the left to the right, wherever you are going. It's all industry, okay. and everybody is so happy at it. It's, it's the name of the particular area where these industries are looking. Yeah, the names are very difficult because okay. there are no English signboards, <laughs> now yes, you know. So yes, it's, it's yeah, always yeah. German long, signboards, yeah. or Regensburg yeah. and Nuremberg, and you know things like Lots that. But birds, that's yeah. something which I liked. You know, the yes. environment was very conducive over there, and you know there was a time when people used to ask, for example, if a rishte wali auntie would go somewhere, yes. be like, "Beta kya karta hai?" And he is well behaved and well educated. <laughs> right. The definition has changed now. It's yes. well behaved, well educated, and well. Well traveled. Yes. That's what people are looking forward to. But ladies and gentlemen, when we speak of exchange program, exchange program is you going to some other university, their children coming over here, yes. having a better understanding of the cultures. But today, what we're going to do is that the guest over here is an advocate of exchange program. So just you know, just to make sure that we establish that exchange program is wonderful, I'm going to negate every part of it by making sure that I make sense. If I do not, obviously, I'll have to succumb to the pressure and accept eventually that obviously exchange programs are important. So, so very. So Rules are already decided on <laughs> that way, right? Yeah, because I certainly did not want my audience to hate me. Yes. That yari kaisi jaino wali baat kar raha hai. Because they're going to go anyway. Because <laughs> it's a good opportunity, right? Yeah. Who don't want to go abroad? <laughs> uh, so we're very glad that we have been joined by Miss Maria Akwar. She has a very impressive CV to her name. She has also done her um, masters from the Oxford Brook University, and she has been a cultural ambassador yeah. for quite some countries. To US, um, to Russia. Yes. And Turkey, and, uh, and I think we would like her to elucidate on whatever the experiences were and where she served. So, assalamu alaikum and thank you so much for coming to uh, us. Thank you so much, uh, Hajra and Shahzad, for inviting me. Uh, first of all, this show is been really lucky for me. Oh. So I was invited here on you know uh, on the New Year. Years, yes. And I just uh, and then after just one week, I went to UK for my degree, and I'm just Wonderful. back, and I was invited <laughs> yeah. here for the show. And you went to Oxford Brooks for uh, for your degree as well, which yes. obviously is great. So let's get started. Why do you think your turn? Uh, cultural exchange programs are important, or education exchange programs are important. Uh, first of all, you know, uh, Pakistanis are really uh, lucky. Pakistani students are really lucky that they got uh, m multiple opportunities for international. As we are a developing country, so you know, uh, there are like nations like um, U.S., U.K., and Russia and Turkey. They offer us multiple scholarships, and those who are you know really passionate about going abroad and uh, represent Pakistan, hmm. um, they really look forward and apply and you know make their uh, CV according to that exposure uh, you hmm. know uh, programs. So um, why, uh, the question that why it's important, you know, that first of all you will get you know a higher degree from that um, uh, you know country, yep. and then you will get you know the uh, the academic um, you can say that really uh, you know it's it's just high excellence academy. You'll get you know. And m mostly, I think that you know the educational exposure is far better than Pakistan. <laughs> but we really study here, and there we have to do a lot of research works and really, you know, um, practical projects. Which is not actually project. research in the first place, right? Yeah. Because the rules of the research are really uh, they, they do not pass higher intellectual level in Pakistan. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not talking about every university there. There are some good universities, mm. like I'm from NAST, so I can yeah. uh, guarantee and I can vouch for that that NAST has like a higher. Like I'm from Air University. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you can you, you guarantee? You can manage the yeah. difference. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Okay, of course, so I'm from Kaidi Azam University, but uh, you know, but one of the it finest. Is, it is, yeah. yeah, it is. Um, uh, but uh, you can't beat the international, you know. Uh, right, so, so, so all right, that's yeah. that's your first point, all right, audiences. So let's uh, <laughs> you know get started with it. Yes. She said that you get a higher degree. She mm -hmm. said uh, it's a high excellence academic mm -hmm. uh, course, you know, which you will be enrolled with. Yes. And then she said that there's going to be international exposure. Obviously, there's not going to be any international exposure over here, 
but yes we had we do have just like uh, haja mentioned nast lams yeah. ib all of these universities yes. which will give you international exposure there are foreign teachers over there is yes. a gentleman will give you a higher degree as well and there will be you know you will make sure that you were enrolled in a higher excellence academic course which anybody would be over there so imagine but rather you know in a foreign university you would only go 3 days a week in the university in pakistan you'll go 5 days a week so who's learning more you over here or over there so uh, you know uh, like here if you can say that the you know the pattern of exams and you know mid terms and exam students are mostly you know they are doing just ratification what we say you know yeah. but there you need to be really uh, you know uh, you need to get learn a, the get concepts a deep understanding yes. you know and you you had a lot of chance to interact with the teachers directly as well yeah. and you are um, you know get marked on the basis of how many research you have done how many yes. writings you have done yeah. rather just like you know getting uh, answering just five questions in a mid term <laughs> and you know 10 questions in a final term yeah. so it's a more broader uh, concept of learning i think i'll have to give you this point yeah. and it's because of the fact that imagine that over here we'll have <laughs> yes. a group of five people and only one will make the entire project exactly. and everybody will be, uh, will Free be marked that. and <laughs> since we do have a professor teacher in the making yes. over here with us so let's ask her that you know how do you think do you think that you're going to resonate with what she said or do you think that obviously academically you're making sure that whatever you're teaching your students is up to the mark i think the intellectual standard in the universities abroad obviously i can't talk about a lot of universities there because i have not been to them but mm. it's certainly higher than the pakistan so i was reading mm. say, uh, in order to become a professor in a university i think in the london or PhD. something you need to write a book okay. in order to qualify uh, to be a professor right and that is why we see that there is a very uh, vigorous uh, intellectual environment there so there's lot of books coming there as compared to pakistan so how many books are we producing a year True. and what is the quality of those books True. right yeah. because i've been reading the books that are coming from the oxford from the cambridge and they have a really amazing yeah. quality and they're, ama they're expensive too and they're expensive <laughs> too so we have to buy the second copy of the yeah, first copy yeah. right yeah. yeah i mean if you're smart enough you can find other copies which are not so expensive yeah. if you know what i yeah. mean old book um, shops yes old book yeah. shops too and also the, then there's the the, the I think the quality of the students that they are taking that is very high in terms of the uh, the, the uh, examinations that you have to right. uh, give in order to pass uh, yeah. to that university. And every student does not make it to the university in the first True. place because there are a lot of vocational centers where the students turn out to go, especially after the colleges. But in Pakistan, there is this just rush of churning out a lot of graduates, yeah. which are then not integrated yeah. into the market, right? So, so one point each. Now, the third question over yeah. here is that imagine that I've seen a lot of my friends when we were in college and we were about. to go enter universities yes. so my friends who actually kind of uh, managed it really difficultly to kind of pass in their fsc examinations and couldn't really get an admission over here were the ones who actually majority of the ones who went abroad to study so imagine when we speak of the standard which way rightfully ms hajar has mentioned i don't think that there is any standard they take in everybody and they like okay you yes. know the kind of course we have will mm. actually enable them to learn no, more that that's why there is a qs ranking worldwide you know that yeah. there's like 500 uh, top best university of the world i'm sure that your friends are not in that 500 top university of the world Obviously, because uh, they're you know, my friends they, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there are uh, you know there are universities they are just you know for uh, money making yeah. but um, i was in one of the right? top uh, you know UCLA, five universities cla berkeley yeah. yes yeah, so so uh, i think you know that depends on which university they are going so some universities definitely they are just but, but so the point money. is not every university right. out there outside pakistan yeah. is a great university you really yeah. need to make sure that you're actually getting into the top Good 500 universities, universities. Right. now yes. number another question very sorry okay, and sure. that is that for all of my friends even wh whether they went to better universities or not hmm. they eventually decided that they're going to stay there whichever country they were in unfortunately they spent 10 years over there they hmm. did the degree in the first 3 4 years then a masters degree just right. in the hope of getting yes. a visa never got a visa came back to pakistan and unfortunately were not able to land a job for themselves as well so right. why do you think that we have to focus on sending our kids out there to yes. study that to in a university which is not academically rich but rather they're damaging they're actually losing out money it's not going to give them a job and there's no future for all of those children yeah so this this is a very you know it's a, it's, a, it's a global de de dilemma yeah. for and especially for pakistani youth because they're really hopeless uh bar being, bar being in bar the bar yeah bar being in the being in pakistan <laughs> so i think you know uh, it is uh, that, they, that it's all about how they perceive their future they just wanted to be in a uh, you know a foreign uh, country or they really want to do something there so i went there but i really want to come back and serve my country yeah. 
So uh, there are students who just want to stay there doing uh, some uh, labor jobs and they are happy with that. Yeah. And their purpose of life is just to make money or just mm. to settle there. Yeah. You know. Uh, but I just think just to marry uh, a foreigner, get yeah. a passport, just so be there. That's it. That situation, you know, um, they, if if they are you know highly intellectual, they will definitely get a job in a better company and they offer sponsorship and they don't need to suffer True. like this way. But unfortunately, you know, uh, everyone now they want to go uh, to uh, go, go uh, want to go to abroad, yeah. and it is. Um, of course, uh, alarming, but I think there are many, uh, you know, uh, students who went to Pakistan and they get a degree and they want to serve back. All right. Thank but you but so I much. I think the education, I think I would like to yeah. side with my co-host here is that thank the you. education is very no expensive there, right? Uh, as compared to Pakistan. So I think you need to have a, a balance of one crore or something in order to complete your degree yeah. there because it is that yeah. much expensive True. as compared to Pakistan. And so even the exchange rate these days, Hajra, yes, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. So, <laughs> and, and one more thing, uh, which I would like to add over here, because what I I've seen is that rather than people going abroad studying and coming back and landing a good job, I've seen a lot of my friends uh, who studied engineering from FAST, Wonderful. NUST, they're working in Silicon Valley, they're working in the yes. top companies as of now. One of my friends I just recently visited in Sweden, he used to be in me, with me in my college, in my university, is working at Google. And I've seen that the universities over here in Pakistan mm. has contributed quite a lot yes. to their well-being and their yes. careers rather right. than people yes. who were even in Oxford, you know, when they came down to Pakistan, weren't able to do well, yes. unfortunately. Or yes. probably they were so well acquainted with the system over there yes. that they right. couldn't really adjust over here. Let the, let's give I them guess, some space you know, as well. uh, I think it all depends on individual, you know. Mm. Uh, if, we, I, if I just compare myself with my classmate who we, we studied, you know, many of us are still jobless, you know, yeah. but many of them are like doing really well. True. And uh, so it all depends yeah, depend on the you know, personal, yeah, personal yeah. Uh, growth. And uh, it's all about, you know, how you are looking and working for your future. True. So I think uh, it's all depend on the person and not on the degrees. But of course, um, uh, it is a done, must thing that, you know, foreign degrees and foreign exposure must add to, add to your CV. Rish and I'm right. here because of my exposure, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So that's a But I think one thing which is important is that a lot of students who go on the student exchange programs, they're not acclimatized with the environment there, right? So for example, they might have to struggle in terms of getting the halal food there. Right. Or I, I mean, there are a lot of cultural shocks that you get abroad. So for example, nowadays we believe that because of the Hollywood and because of all of these seasons, uh, we know that what is the culture there, but when you experience it, it is very different and you might experience a lot of cultural shocks there right because mm. our culture is different their culture is different um, and that sort of uh, acclimatization can be very stressful for a yeah. lot right. of students right. there right yeah. um, and uh, so we would like to wrap up our segment here and we always uh, encourage people who want to go abroad because obviously it's a very eye-opener and you get to learn a lot right, right? Uh, so what are some of the good exchange programs in your so uh, I, will, I would like to talk on the exposure program I went so uh, okay. I went to a uh, U grade it's called undergraduate semester exchange program to US it's a one semester yeah, yeah, degree yeah. program and you know every year there are 200 Pakistani students yes. went there so uh, in then in this program you'll get chance to study in top 55 yeah. uh, universities of US and we get the entire faculty over here on our show every year yeah, they yes, come exactly. over here yes. because they're so, in the Pakistani market yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, so this is one of the best and it's fully funded True. and there's another program is called Eurasia so it's um, it's uh, it's Every year it's happening in uh, Russia. So this time again in, in August it's happening. So it's a uh, 10-day uh, program where the, you know there's a lot of companies and global um, uh, INGOs all are there under yeah. one roof. And it happened in Orenburg. So you know those who are watching they can apply now. And then in Turkey there's another exchange program which is called Isaac. That's an internship yes, yes. Uh, opportunity. Yes. Um, and then uh, so there, there's also international youth um, council uh, uh, you know exposure program IUCN in Switzerland Geneva as well which yeah. is also coming in coming months yeah so and even as of now since you mentioned about it Babar Azam and Mohammed Rizwan yes. are in Harvard <laughs> at Harvard, they're <laughs> making sure that they're going to study a course as well. But thank you so much thank for being so with much. us. Thank you so much for raising awareness of exchange programs. We are all advocates of that. But what I would rather suggest is that you complete your education yes. and then you save the money to travel the world. You know, so when you travel the world, you go to different business hubs, you learn from people, you sit down with them. And that's the best way of learning. And I just myself cannot imagine, okay, I, I have 
went to other countries to host a lot of shows Wonderful. but if i am supposed to go and study and that too probably in a country which is as beautiful as england for example okay. i'll be like who's who's looking at the book i'm not looking at the book I i'm mean, looking out of the window i mean people have different priorities so if someone is really interested <laughs> okay. in the research you want to pursue a phd degree there True. but obviously uh, i mean going there is a delight and a feast to your intellectual faculty so it all depends uh, what priorities do you have in your life and i always say especially to the people that after your bachelor's degree you need to work for a couple of years and make sure that which suit field particularly suits that and after that then you go for a master's True. degree because this is how you're going to uh, polish your intellectual yeah. skills and also your professional so skills. So two different school of yes. thoughts ladies <laughs> and gentlemen you can pick up on one you know so we have given you yes. all the opportunity. Thank you so much once again Thank for everybody so who's out there please make sure that you have a great yes. week ahead if there's anything which is bugging you please make sure that the only um, what you really need to do is that ask Allah for help only. Yes. That's it. You know, yes. nobody else, zero expectations. You'll have a great life until next time. One, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning. Have a great day. Have a great week. <laughs>